thank thank God for everything he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right? Look, uh, I, had a, I had a great time with the family. We, um, but I'm happy to be back, right? We're we're over here in the house of the Lord one more time, right? Can I tell you guys we have about five weeks, five weeks before the year ends. Time went by quick, right? But let me tell you guys something. I have a couple of announcements that we're going to be doing um, to the end of the year. So um, um, I just make sure that if you guys would like to be part of it, you guys come see us and, and get involved. Get involved. All right? So number one, um, I wanted to let you guys know that um, no, um, December 17th, December 17th, we are going to have a community event. All right? We're going to be um, um, having a, a, a festival outside. We're going to be having um, some hot chocolate, some, some some toys. We're going to be doing this big uh, festival for the community, right? So we're going to be that light, right? So uh, so if you guys want to volunteer, right, get with your leaders, all right? Um, and today, actually, we're going to be sitting down and kind of go, going over what we're going to be doing for that day, all right? Now, the, another thing I wanted to ask from you guys is um, any volunteers that we have in the church that would like to volunteer in any area, right? There's a risk management for that we have to be doing and that's that's per the state of California we have to be doing this all right so if you guys feel the calling on any kind of ministry or you guys are not sure if you guys are gonna be volunteer for anything in the church please come and see us and, and take a form it's a, it's a package that you guys gotta fill out a pretty simple package I think I can explain it to you guys or I can but just bring it over and um, just come over and we'll give you a package Sign it, get it in so that you guys can volunteer in anything in the church, right? It's called a risk management package, okay? So if you guys have any questions, come see us after, okay? But I need everybody who's in the worship team, in the women's ministry, men's ministry, you know, anybody who's volunteering in the church to take this package, all right? So the sooner the better, right? Because we want to we want to get um, uh, everything in line before um, we uh, by the by the end before the year ends. All right. So if you guys can do that for me, just come see me. All right. But other than that, we're about to start our service. But look, yesterday I was I was watching a movie um, and it was talking about rising up, right? And it just captured my attention. You know, it was like rising up. Right? And then I started just thinking about, you know what? In the midst of our troubles, we should always rise up. Amen. And when, when we're going through struggles, we yeah. need to get up and say, you know what, God? You're in control, and I'm going to rise up. Yes. You know? Yes. When we see our kids going the, uh, going the wrong direction, you know, it's time for us to just pray for them, and you know that God is going to do something, and, and, and we just got to rise up. You know, when, when, when we're doing so well at our work and we're doing so well, we got to continue to look up, to rise up. Yes. But we just got to remember that God is in control. Yes. You know, and, and when we remember that, right, when we remember that, you know, we got to worship and praise Him for everything He has done. And before the year ends, let's remember that. Let's, let's rise up. And let's remember that God is in control. Amen? So today we're here for one reason, right? And we're here to worship and, and you know, and hear what God has for us in the service, right? So let's get out, get up, and let's just pray to, to start the service. Amen? Amen. All right. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. For just overall what you're doing, Lord, for what you're doing in the church, Lord, in our communities, what you're doing in the world, Lord, and everything that um, you, you just keep doing, Lord. You are a good, good Father, Lord, and we trust in you, Lord. Today, as we come before you, Lord, we want to ask you that you take control over this service, Lord, that everything that is said, Lord, is just to glorify your name, Lord. Today, we're here to worship you, to, to honor you, Lord, and today, we just want to ask you, Lord, that um, as, as, we, as we are here, we're gathered together, Lord, we know that you are here. Holy Spirit, make your way in here, Lord. And we just want to ask you that you take control over the service, Lord, and just make it your will, Lord. Thank you for everything in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I am free to have another breakthrough. 
Yeah. Is anybody in the house with me? I am 30. I don't know if anybody in my life, and I've got my hand raised up, where I'm not looking for a breakthrough. I think that we have taken breakthrough and we have put it in a category that we think, well, there's something wrong. If I'm going to have a breakthrough, it means that I'm really stuck and there's something wrong. It does not mean that. It just means that you want to get closer to God. You want to be able to be with that connection with God so that every day, every moment, when you lay down in bed at night, that you have a peace that passes all along. I don't know anybody that's not looking for peace. Everybody's looking for peace. But you see, I give thanks to the ladies. The ladies set up this Christmas tree. This tree represents something that to me, I always, every year I look at it and I say, wait a minute, whether you are a follower of Christ or you don't even believe in Him, many millions of Americans this year are going to have this tree set up in their house. They're going to be with presents gathered around. I have friends that they say, don't give me that Jesus, and you don't even want to know what they say. They get upset whenever I talk about Jesus to them. But yet, this tree is going to be standing in their house. It's going to have lights. It's going to have presents. They're going to be having ham. They're going to be having turkey. And a lot of them even put lights around their house. This tree represents breakthrough. I want to give you a little history on this tree, and I think this is really going to resonate with some of you. Some of you that are really, you may already know this, but this tree is amazing to me. An Old Testament prophet that goes back almost 500 years, he told that Jesus was going to come. Did you know that? Back in the Old Testament scripture, there was a man that worked it out, and he took from seven times seven years. They talk about weeks, but those weeks are years. And when you add up to 490, and then you take out like a man did, he took out all the leap years, he adjusted for the calendar that was the old Mosaic calendar to the calendar of the day, and his triumphal entry actually lined up with all those days. So that tree is so significant to me because that means that Jesus, and God said in Galatians, said, at the perfect time, in the fullness of time, and we can add it all up and we can look at well, the Roman Empire, we can look at all of the commerce that was going on, we can look at everything that was happening, and we can come up with our own opinion and our own conclusion. Why was that the fullness of time? But God said it was the fullness of time. No one will know exactly why that was the fullness of time, but I believe that God is perfect. Does anybody in this house believe that God is perfect? And how many would agree with me today that God came in your life at the perfect time? here and God came at the perfect time. So when we look at that tree, that tree represents to be breakthrough. Amen. You may never have heard anything like this before, but when you gather around your tree, you need to realize that that tree is celebrated because Jesus Christ came down and entered into human history as a man so he could walk, he could talk, and he could actually bring God down to earth. And he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So without Christmas, we could have never have known what we know about the Father, our Father God. So to me, that's breakthrough, and I'm looking for another breakthrough. I don't know about you guys in here, but I'm looking for another breakthrough. Because when you begin to get in the spirit of God, did you know that one of the things today that's amazing is that by us meeting together in this house, this isn't just church. This isn't some religious setting where we're getting together and we're going through some exercise. We are praising the living God. He is the only one that can set us free. He is the only one that can heal us. He is the only one that can give us liberty, even with everything to us right now on this earth. He's the only one that can give you liberty and in the midst of all circumstances you can raise up when everybody else is down crying and they're saying it's the end of the world. You can say it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Jesus Christ. He began to set up his kingdom. Follow me this morning. When Jesus came and he was born of a virgin and we have all of these crosses and we have all these little symbols those are just symbols. 
you've got to realize that Jesus, he was the son of the living God, and he came down to earth so that he could set us free. So it was the beginning of his kingdom being set up, and it says that his kingdom would never end. Everything here is temporal, and life gives the illusion of permanency. I want you to know that this life is not permanent. Right. And I want to remind you today that no one has a promise of tomorrow. No one. Right. So I am not going to get caught up so much in today that I forget about my living God, my living Jesus, and that I won't make the most of this day because I don't even know if I have tomorrow promises. So I am not going to walk around like I am still behind bars when I know that Jesus came. I'm reminded this season of the street that's lit up that that was Jesus coming down to earth so that he could live out his life. He could die on the cross. So now I can say, at my worst day, when I'm not measuring up, that's good. when I feel like I am losing, when I feel like that I can't do it anymore, I look at the cross and say, it's not me anyway. It's not me in this place. It's only the cross of blood that literally ran down and was puddling on the ground. That's the truth. That's powerful. And I look at that, and if God be for me, who can be against me? like you all do. And I look at things and they're piling up. How many feel like today? And if you say that the things aren't piling up, then you need to look at the Ten Commandments because you're not telling the truth. <laughs> there is nobody in this place that is that perfect because if you were, you would be in heaven with Jesus right now. And nobody here on earth is perfect. So all of us have bricks that are on our shoulders and you've got to get up every day and you've got to praise and worship Him and you've got to realize that you can't do anything without Jesus. I can't make it anymore, God. And God's going to say, you know, all you got to do is get up. you got to remember who you are in Jesus. you got to remember I did put you on the cross. And not only did Jesus die on the cross, they roll him up in all of these grave clothes. They put him in a tomb. And they roll the stone back. And the enemy in all of which this is just my own what I'm thinking, because the scriptures don't bear it up exactly, is that I believe they were celebrating. I believe Satan and all of the demonic realm, I think that they were celebrating. I think they finally figured out they got rid of this Jesus that was tormenting them. It was causing their entire empire to be torn down brick by brick. And no matter what they did to try to kill the church, they couldn't kill the church. They thought it was done, it was over with, because when he died, he gave up his last breath, and he looked up into heaven and he said, It is done. It's finished. It's finished. Amen. Everything that that tree represents, him coming to earth, 33, over 33 years, and he gave it up. And you know why he said it's finished? For us here today, he did everything he could do. And guess what happened on the third day? This isn't Easter, but every day is like Easter to me. Amen. Every day. Amen. Because I know when I'm with loved ones that are dying, and when I'm with myself that sometimes I feel like that I'm not going to make it. And I say, it doesn't matter how I feel. That stone was rolled back on the third day, and Jesus got up, and he walked out of that tomb, and he now took away of death. So when you look at the tree, when you're all gathered around, just sit back quietly and start to think, Jesus came. It was a breakthrough. It was in the perfect timing. He finished everything that he said he would do. Now I am free. Hallelujah, I am free. And now I am ready for my next breakthrough. How many are ready for a breakthrough in this place today? I'm going to be up here talking to you and preaching to you, but you know what? I'm looking for a breakthrough today too. I'm looking for a manifestation of the glory of God that's going to take us to a new level. I like what T.D. Jakes says. 
Some of you may not I love them. He says, new levels, new devils. So every time I have a breakthrough, I don't rest. I don't say, oh God, you gave me a breakthrough. Now we're going to sit back for the next three years and I'm just going to bask in this breakthrough. No, I get up and I get ready for the next one. And I say, God, you're going to, you're going to equip me. You're going to give me everything I need to get through this next breakthrough. So it's one breakthrough after another breakthrough after another breakthrough. And that's a glorious way to live, isn't it? Because if you don't live that way, then you're going to get back in that muck and that mire and you're just going to be wallowing in it and you're just going to have the same story every year. You, you want to hear that same story every year from this no. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear about how I said something at the beginning of the year I was going to do and I didn't do it. I don't want to. But even in that, God's mercy and His grace will carry you through and you can get up and say, no more! And you can begin to praise Him. If you can't do anything else, raise your hands up and start to praise Him. That's good. That's good. So I give glory to God every day, every moment. Hallelujah. So when you look at these breakthroughs, how many have ever watched heavyweight boxing? I know some of you guys have. I don't really follow it a lot anymore, but I went all the way back to Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali. Uh, I can name them, all those heavyweight boxers. But what would happen is sometimes, and I remember this, that they would have a guy that never had been past the sixth round. You guys ever remember that? Yeah. And they said, this guy, as a commentator saying, this guy's never been past the sixth round ever in his entire career professionally. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It was new territory for him. He'd never been there before. That's good. And then when you have runners, we heard Ryan a couple of weeks ago, he said he would get into about his third mile on a 10 mile run. Do you remember that? Yeah. And he said he'd feel like that he couldn't go anymore. He'd feel like that he was completely exhausted in his mind and the mental and the emotional. And he said he pushed through that barrier. And when he pushed through, it's like he got a whole new breath of fresh air. And he ran all the way through to finish the race. Amen. You know, that's the way it is in our lives. That's the way it is for Christians. We all get to that point that we got to break through. We get to that point in our Christian life. We get to that point with all of the pressures and all the noise and all of the financial and all the relational problems. And we get sometimes to a point where we get stuck. And we feel like that we can't even go further anymore. And God is saying, this is what He's saying to you this morning. You want to break through? You get a breakthrough today. And you don't have to sit back and say, well, I'm really concerned of the people around here. I'm so worried that they think I need a breakthrough. They're going to think that I'm really doing something bad. But that's wrong thinking because I want a breakthrough no matter how well I think I'm doing. I want a breakthrough. And I want to be able to get the glory of God. I want to be able to go to the next place that He wants me to go. How do you think His kingdom's going to be advanced? And you may be surprised as you begin to hear some of these scriptures today. Look at this first scripture. When we, how many know Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit poured out? I want you to look at this, and I want you to see the breakthrough that they had, that they've been looking for for generations and generations, looking for the Messiah to come. And Jesus came. He was born. He lived. He died. He rose again. He was seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Father said, Jesus. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to release on earth. Where would we be today, church? Some of you may not be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. You may not really understand. You may not have had a real experience. But let me tell you, when you have a one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Ghost, you will never be the same again. You may have a hunger. It builds a hunger and a thirst for you. And you don't even worry about what other people think anymore because you know that you want the connection with a living God and you don't care about the people here. You care about them, but not about what they think about your relationship. Because if you don't have a connection with God, and if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit on the regular on the regular, then you are never going to be able to have a breakthrough. Amen. I said that. That part. <laughs> because I know I've been living a few years. And I know without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Ghost, I'm not going nowhere. I need His power and I need His strength to get through today, to get through tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next year. Can anybody shout amen? Yeah. So, 
By Jesus coming, do you realize when you look at this tree again, the Holy Spirit would have never been released in Acts chapter 2 unless this happened. <laughs> unless Jesus came, and unless he did everything the Father asked him to do, and then when he finished it, and then when he was raised from the dead on the third day, and seated it right in the Father, then he released the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to all mankind. Do you know, you guys know, do you guys know, that before this day that I'm going to read to you, do you know that the Holy Spirit was not available after, before that? Did you know that? Did you know only prophets, priests, and kings, the Holy Ghost would come upon them to do the work that they were going to do? And then guess what would happen? It never lived inside of them. So do you know what kind of a generation? Do you know what that tree means? Do you know what it means to have Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, releasing the Holy Spirit to all of us? I don't have to be a king. I don't have to be a prophet. I can have my body full of the Holy Ghost by serving Jesus and just asking Him to come in. And that's what happened when Jesus came. When He left earth, He released the Holy Spirit. So it was a breakthrough of all breakthroughs because no one was able to have this happen before the upper room experience. How many have ever heard of the upper room experience? Anybody that plays upper room? That's the upper room experience. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. There were 120 of them. Did you know that connection and community is what God really ordained? Did you know when you look at architecture and you look at design, do you know exactly what we're having happen here today and all across America and all across the world? It is the exact architecture and the design of God for us to have connection with God and then to have connections with each other. Without the connections of each other and everything that we have as a church, as the body of Christ, as the glory of God, as the light of the world, did you know we would have none of that without connections? Do you know how important you are? Look, look to your neighbor and say, you're important. You are, you are so important. Because Reinhard Bonnke said, all hands on deck. All hands on deck. Now you say that, say that. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. I don't want to be there. See, a deck is a ship. I get the picture. I'm not going to be laying low down in the bottom of my boat, laying there sleeping through the years. I'm getting up on the deck and right. So we can see the glory of God unfold before our very eyes. Some of you are getting it this morning. I know I'm, I'm giving like, a, I always like to shoot a shotgun. Any of you don't know what it is? A shotgun has a So wherever you are in your walk, I'm shooting a shotgun today. Amen. Some of you, it's going to make you even more hungry. Amen. You're going to be so hungry. So. They were all together in one place. Now, I want you to imagine for one moment that one of just one or two guys got together in that upper room. Think about it. 120 of them. The disciples, men, women, 10 days. God said, go, meet, wait. I'll give it to you at the right time. It's going to be the breakthrough of all mankind since the beginning of Adam and Eve that failed. This would be the power to set us free, not only for salvation, but so that we would have the power to live it out. I feel bad for the denominations that I'm not slamming them, but when they don't believe in the Holy Ghost, and they say that there isn't a power after the full initial, when you get saved, I'm sorry, I can't live with that. i got to have some power from God. I gotta have something from heaven. I need some more than this world. And I can't get it just by, see, salvation's great, and it means you're gonna go to heaven. But now I wanna do exploits. I wanna do marvelous men, huge things for God so that the kingdom of God can be advanced. We are having in this city, we are already beyond the killings that we had from this time last. We already passed up the whole year in San Bernardino. The kids are killing each other. You think I'm going to sit back and think I'm going to do this with my own strength? We will not do it with our own strength. That's just the tip of the iceberg. we got to get together. we got to get together. Men in one accord. we got to join together. we got to take all that stuff. we got to take all that junk. And Lord willing, we're going to get through it over the next several weeks into the new year that we got to close our mouth. 
We got to start tearing down, stop tearing down the body. We got to start building each other up. We got to come together tight and in force so that God can do the power that He has. It's, it's reserved for all of us. You go on. Without a warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. <laughs> I just imagined it blew through the windows and all these people are just waiting there in anticipation. If you came to this church this day and you're in anticipation and you're saying, I want to break through, you know what's going to happen to you? Oh my God. When you anticipate and when you are expecting something to happen, but when you come up, if there's ever an altar call, I can always tell. When somebody comes up here and they're just coming up here like, yeah, show me God. <laughs> Come on, where is it? You may get it. Like I'll never forget a man. He came in and he left the church and he was living out on the streets. He came in one day and I knew his attitude. He stood there in Moreno Valley. He walked up front and center. He didn't even know why he was up there. He was just kind of like, did you know I never even got to touch that guy? Mm -hmm. God already had an appointment for that man. Did you know all I did is I saw him standing there. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I just started walking toward him. And you talk about suddenly. Amen. Anybody that was there that day, they saw it. It was like a lightning bolt. You couldn't hear it, but it was like an explosion. And he flew all the way back, four or five feet, hit the ground. Nobody caught him. Oh. <laughs> he bounced. But guess what happened to this pastor? I got caught in the middle of that fire from heaven and I was so excited because it knocked me clear back into the speakers and I fell down and I couldn't get up for a long time and I said, God, people do not even realize your holiness. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't even know your power. That's the kind of power that God wants to manifest in these neighborhoods. He wants to come in homes that are drug infested, that are gang infested. He wants to just explode that. having trouble even saying that he knew Jesus. He now got up and he preached a sermon of all sermons. And when he got done, 3,000 men dropped down on their knees and he gave it. And the church grew exponentially. Can you imagine? I always think about this. What would happen if this church grew by 3,000 today? See, the Marquis sings up in history and we say, oh, that was for history. That was historical. This is today more alive than ever because we have 8 billion people on this planet and millions and millions and millions of them do not know Jesus. So how much more do we need a fire to hit the church? Do we need more? It just all of a sudden it hits the church and we are never the same again. And guys are going to be getting up and they're going to be grabbing a microphone. They're going to be getting out and preaching wherever they're at. And people are going to say, oh my God. What God a hold of sin? <laughs> we never heard him talk like this before. What in the world happened to him? I'll tell you what happened to him. He got full of the Holy Ghost. And he got out of this muck and this mire. He said, How dare you, Pastor, say I can walk in fire? Yeah, yeah. 
you're, you're down, and you're not up, and you're not excited, and I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying that you need to get an anticipation. You need to get a stirring going on. When the spirit is moving, you need to jump in. If you see that stirring, you need to jump right in the middle of it and say, God, I want more of you. I want to grow you. And when you do that, you will never be the same again. Never. Amen. You'll be preaching your head off. Because when you've got something like that inside of you, try to cap it off. The devil will try to cap it off. Your friends will try to cap it off. Your family will try to cap it off. And you say, uh uh, no way. I'm not putting a cap on that. In fact, every time the Spirit's moving, I'm going to open up and say, fill me to all of you. And you're going to allow the Spirit of the living God to fill you so full. Then it's going to be an overflow, and you're going to say, This is wonderful. I got enough for myself, and I got enough for everybody else because it's going to overflow out of you. And you're going to walk around and say, This is amazing. What do I do with my life? <laughs> and you don't think for a second that the enemy's trying to stop this? Yeah. He's working on all of us, he's trying to shut it down. And the government, and our families, and our schools, I'm not naive. I know what he's trying to do. But he, he doesn't win. The enemy doesn't win. When Jesus came, this is life. That wasn't the end of the story. When you get done at the end of the night, you open your presence and the 25th comes and goes, when it's now getting toward the new year, it just started. It has just begun. We have got, whatever God gives us in time, that's what we have each one of us. But here's the thing today, as I wrap this up, you and I have a responsibility. True. You've heard it so many times, but there's so much truth in it. You need to, you can't worry. You can't worry about what he's saying. You can't worry about what you're saying. You can't worry about what she's saying. And you can't worry about what she's saying. You, because we can't do anything for each other except for take the spirit of the living God, edify, equip, raise up, Build up. Encourage. That's what we can do for each other. And we can pray for each other. But you got to take and you got to stand right here. And you got to draw a circle around you. And it's a connection between you and God. That's good. Amen. You can't look at anybody else. You can't say, well, you don't know how they talk about me. You don't know what they say. You don't know what they did to me, my family. You don't know what my dad did to me. You don't know what they did to me in school. You don't know what they did to me. Jesus knew what they were going to do to you. He knew exactly what they were going to say. He knew what they were going to do. And he knew that as soon as you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, it was going to be full on persecution, ridicule, tearing you down, speaking against you, saying you're weird. I would rather be weird and be walking around and be taking down giants in the evil realm because Jesus is with me. I'll be weird all day long. I'm able to walk up to people. Walk up to people in Mark chapter 16, it says that after they you preach the word of God, after the word of God goes out, it says that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Call me weird if you will. When I go to the hospital, when I pray for people, I say, you can call me weird all you want. I don't say that out loud. I, never, I would never be that rude. But I got to see some things, folks. I got to be in the hospital when, when people were dying. I got to be in the hospital when, when people were totally out of control and they had to hold them down. I've got to walk up to people when they were flailing and the doctor said, you got to hold them down. We don't know what to do. And all I did is I said, I know what to do. And I just walked up and I just put my hand on their shoulder. And I just looked up in front of everybody. One time they had people that had flown in from all over the country. They had broke all the rules in ICU. They must have had 25 people in that room. And they got to see the, the power of the living God. Because all I did is put my hand and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bring peace right now to this body. And right before their very eyes, she just went down like this and she just relaxed. And then the doctor walks up to me. And he looks at me, and he looks at her. I wish I knew what was going on in his mind. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, 
I see a tear coming down his face and he looks at me. I said, Pastor, she really is in the hands of God. I said, yeah, doctor. Amen. She Amen. is. Amen. She is. Come on. This is what we have. Amen. We have something that is it's, it's more powerful than anything here on earth. Amen. So don't think for a moment that the enemy is not going to do everything he can to keep you from doing something. Right. He's going to get you attached to things. He's going to get you emotionally attached to things. He's going to get you working so overtime in your mind. You're going to, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to take captive those thoughts because they're going to take you captive. You got to, as soon as those, those thoughts, as soon as they don't line up with the Word of God, as soon as you say, here's what I do. This is me. Thought, Word of God. I do this. Does this line up with the Word of God? The moment that I see that it doesn't, I start saying, Jesus, Jesus, no, no. And you, think, you probably think I'm weird. I need to go to a counselor. <laughs> That's what I do. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, if I get so caught up in a bunch of worry and a bunch of stuff, then I immediately go to the Word of God and I say, what does the Word of God say? Did you know that every time, every time, God will come in and the power of the Holy Spirit will come on you and you'll come out of that thing a lot faster than you ever came out of it before. So we could have some music right now. I'm, I'm excited about this today. I'm excited for some of you. Because I know that as you've been sitting and you've been listening today to the Word of God, as you've been worshiping, I know some of you are ready for breakthrough. You, you have an anticipation level that's off the charts right now. And you are ready to receive. That's exactly what Jesus wants. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be anticipating. And even if you think that you're not all there, exactly where God wants you to be, you don't have to worry about that. You just give it to Him completely. Amen. We're closing out a year, you guys. 2022 is almost gone. When I say 2023 is going to be a great year, I just don't say that. You know why I say that with, with conviction? Because I know God is on the throne. Amen. And I know that He is going to do things in the United States and all over the world that is just going to take the kingdom of... I say plunder hell today and populate heaven. That's what I say.
and pregnant this place with the power of God right now. 